Uh, may this message be remind us of the goodness of, of God in our life. And I just want to uh, uh, say that I'm not making parinig, but this is the word of God. This is what the word of God is saying. And the Lord put this in my heart, and I will believe that the Lord will be the one to bless his word and to edify his people. So in the book of Jude, we can see, you can see at least three things here. The opening charts of Jude, uh, and the warnings, and also his closing, uh, and his closing charts, which is encouraging to all the believers. So here in, the, in, the, uh, in this book, we can see that there is no specific, specific church community he wrote to. But mostly he wrote to the Messianic Jews, means these are the Jews who came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Jude or Judah and James are the half brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the meaning of his name is he shall be praised. Do you know that before Jude doesn't, he don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and later on they came to know the Lord and they beca he became a missionary and a teacher. So here we are going to study the letter that he had brought here. Jude did not specifically teach on how to contend for the faith, but rather he starts in why. But before that, let me just read these verses. In verse 1 until verse 3, it says, Jude, the servants of Jesus Christ, and brother of, brother of James, to them that are sanctified, talking to those who are believers believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called. That's us. Those are people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 2 he said, Mercy unto you, and peace, and love. But the good thing is that when he said the last word, he said, Be multiplied. You know, we already have the mercy of God. We already have the peace of God. We already have the love of God. But he's saying, let it be multiplied in our lives. And that is the goodness of God, of God, of God in our life. Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. I am supposed to write to you and exhort you about this common salvation. But it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It was given to you once, but I am now reminding you to contend for the faith. Why? This is the why. For there are certain men, crap in our ways, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. These are ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, that is our Lord Jesus Christ. What, the, what he's saying is, these people turning the goodness of God into evil thing. They are transforming it by their own teachings. In verse 5 it says here, here in verse 5 to 10, Jude gave these three Old Testament examples about rebellion and the divine justice. So here in verse 5 it says here, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Okay, I want you to remember this. Talking most probably to the, to the Jews, though he once knew this, you have known this before, how the Lord had saved the people or the people out of the land of Egypt, reminding the Jews that you were once uh, uh, rescued by God from the land of Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh. Afterward, listen to this, afterward, afterward, destroy them that believe not. When does that happen? Actually, if you remember, if you have read the book of Numbers, actually the Lord wants to kill these people. You know why he wants to kill them? Because of their disobedience and because of their no merits. But, but uh, Moses said, no, no, don't kill them. Because if you will kill them, the Egyptians will think, or the, the nations surrounding them will think that the reason why you put them out of Egypt just to kill them in the wilderness. But if we're going to read in the book of Numbers, Moses said, but the Lord listened to me. So this is what they do. These people are least like the people that are uh, destroyed in the wilderness. These are the people that are, uh, this is the example that Jude is giving. In verse 6, and the angels which kept not their first state 
but left their own habitation and had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great days. These are the, those who rebelled against God. And even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves to fornication and going after strange place. These are strange place. These are the Sodomites and set forth an example suffering the vengeance, vengeance of eternal life. So here we see how Sodom and Gomorrah did the wicked things before the Lord. And we know why the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We know it is because of sin. But the payment of sin is that. And that's why they died. And people say, well, why the Lord killed them? Because they disobeyed God. There is no sin that will stand before God. Verse 8, likewise also this filthy, filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. They are making, uh, these are the one making like idols or uh, pictures to defile the flesh, to despise dominion. In verse 9, it says here, yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. Satan's want to, to dispute the body of Moses. They said, according to the, what they call this, to the tradition, or what I read, that the, the Satan wants to get the body of Moses. But here, when Michael the archangel, there is only one Michael the archangel, disputed the body of Moses, did not say anything. What you know what he said? He only said, the Lord rebuke thee. That's the only word that he said. But look at it in verse 10. In verse 10, but this is speak of those things which he know not. You know, this, this, uh, this corrupt teachers. But this speak of those things which they know not, but what they natur but know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. They are speaking of something that they do not know. That's why they are hurting themselves. Whenever we, we, we corrupt the word of God, it will only hurt ourselves. And that's what will happen to those people who corrupt the word of God what they do not know that there is something that there is a, a consequences as on this it, you, will, you will just only hurt yourselves in this in verse 11 of Jude chapter 1 actually there is only one chapter it says here well unto them for they have gone in the way of Cain what is the way of Cain he rebelled against God he disobeyed God and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for what? Balaam wasn't able to curse Israel, but rather what he did is that he, uh, what do you call this? He led them to worship other God. And he, and he did that for money. And that is some, something that we need to be reminded of. You know what Balaam did, you know, why, why he accepted this while seeing the goodness of God? Imagine this. Balaam saw the power of God. Balaam saw in his very own eye or eyes that the, the donkey spoke like a man. That's the power of God. But still, he don't understand. But what he did, he continued in, in, his, in his own motive. What he did is that he led the Israel to worship other God. And one more is that in, in this one, and Paris in the game saying of Kore, what Kore, what Kore did? He led the people of Israel to rebel against God. And this is the time when God killed those people who did not believe in God. We can always see here that sin, the payment of sin, is death. What does it say in uh, Ezekiel chapter, two, chapter 34 verse 2? It says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherd of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the, to the shepherds, 
Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? But these people are doing the opposite way. They are doing the opposite way. What does it say in verse 12 of the book of Job? It says, These are spots in your feast. Later I will say, What's the meaning of that? The feast of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water, carried about, carried about of wheels, trees whose fruit, fruit withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Means they are dead. That's the meaning of that. What does, it says here, when he, when he said that, uh, there are spots in your feast of charity. These are people that whenever they are there, they are trying to destroy the people of God. And these are the, the, the false teachers. It says in Proverbs chapter, chapter 25, verse 14, Proverbs 25, 14 says, Whoso boasted himself of a false gift is like a cloud and wind, without rain they are talking nonsense that is what that is the meaning of that these first teachers they are talking nonsense and the problem is that why do you listen to them in the in verse 13 of Jude, it says here ranging waves of the sea forming out their own shame wandering stars the room is reserved for reserve the blackness of the darkness forever you know what? Have you seen the, the waves in the sea and the shore? When the, uh, the waves keep on coming, they will be, it will form uh, what do you call that? The fo it will form a foam. And he's saying that these people are like that. In their words, you will see the simple thing that they are doing. You will see that. In Isaiah 57, verse 20 says, But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whoso, uh, whose waters cast up mire and dirt because of the, the wrong teaching it's just showing them how, how filthy they are because they are trying to corrupt the word of God that is the, the warning of Jude to these people but the righteousness but the righteous people rest in the Lord you know all of us we get tired both physical and some and spiritual, but the Lord is kept on saying us, if you are tired and heavy laden, you come to me. That is the only reason why we can get comfort or we can get comforted when we rest in the Lord. But but in all of these things there is hope, there is coming glory, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. See? Uh, though he mentioned those things uh, Jude mentioned all of those things, but he said, but don't worry, there is a coming hope, just like uh, Peter Gomez mentioned this morning. There is a coming glory, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just read first, verse 14, And Enoch also, the servant from Adam, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Of his saints. Here, we can see even though those things happen in the life of those Christians, in the life of those believers, there is always hope. And even Jude mentioned Enoch about the coming, the Lord, the coming of the Lord, that when he come, 10,000 will be saints. Who are those? Those people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, mentioning the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe we are so excited about that. And those things will happen even though in this chaotic world we know that there is something will happen one day that is our blessed hope. And the Lord will come. I don't know if you are aware of the news now. Do you know that any moment there will be war in the Middle East between Israel and, and Iran and in Asia between, between China, maybe Philippines or Japan? I always... What's the news? But what, in any moment, there will be war. There are rumors of war. 
But we know that these things are just sign of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not know when the rapture will occur. But, at least if we are aware of this, at least we know there is a seven years earlier when the Lord come on his second time, on his second coming. And we know that. But, although those things happen, there is a coming glory, there is, there is this hope the Lord, is, the, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ will come, but there is also a coming judgment. There is also a coming judgment in verse 15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly de deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Those who spoke against the Lord Jesus Christ, they have their time. Don't you worry. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a coming hope. Open your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Look at to this. L listen to this word. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weak. It says here that our God is a God of knowledge. He knows everything. If people think they will get away from this, no, because God knows everything. Even our very own heart. God knows that. One day there will be a judgment for the unbelievers. And that is the white throne judgment. And one day there will be a judgment for the righteous. And that is the Bema judgment. One day we're going to appear before God. And everything is says here, the action of these people will be weighed. In verse 16, it says here, Jude 16, these are, these are they. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of what? Advantage. They are talking good to people just to benefit from them. These are the false teachers. They are talking about to think the goodness of what they are teaching because they want to benefit from these people. When we, whenever we speak, I hope and I pray that we speak for the Lord. We cannot totally execute that in our life, but at least in our life, we should be aware of what we are doing, of what we are saying before men and before God. Because God knows everything. Proverbs 28, verse 21. 28, 21 of Proverbs. To have respect of person is not good. Listen to this. For a piece of bread that man will transgress. Imagine, just, just for a piece of bread, they will lead these people to rebel against God. Just for a piece of bread. In Proverbs 18, 5 says, it is not good means to show partiality. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. See? Do not show partiality in whatever they do. It should be true. And these people are showing partiality. They are not saying, they are not teaching the word of truth in their lives. They want to, to uh, make the people of God astray from putting their faith in God. In verse 17 and 19, let us read that, verse 17 and 19. But beloved, verse 17, but beloved, remember, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers or scoffers in the last time. We, we should walk after their own ungodly lust. This, this, uh, this be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. This is a warning on the last days that was given by Jude. But if you are going to see, look at um, the verse 18, it says, How that they told you there should be markers in the last time. 
who should walk after their own ungodly lust. We, and we can see that now. I don't have to elaborate it now. You can see from in the internet, from YouTube, people are mocking God. It's like something like that. They will not be. They will escape from this. No, there will be a time. There will be a time. But this time we are so excited. You know why? Because we are going to meet God face to face. We are going to meet Him face to face, and I hope the Lord will allow me to to lean on His chest. That's what I decide when I get to heaven. But you know what? To these people, it's been prophesied in the Bible. It is not me. It is the word of God who prophesied that in the last time there will be mockers. There will be scoffers. In verse 19, this be they who separate themselves. Sensual. You know why they do that? They don't have the spirit in their life. I am not trying to judge anyone. But the word of God says, those things that do these things, they don't have the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God matters in our life. He's the one who rebirth us, He's the one who born us again. At kung kapag ang sangman ng if one believer doesn't have, or a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, he will go to hell. That's why they are doing this, doing these things. You know what? I will say this again. We can commit mistakes. We can commit sin. But we are convicted by the Holy Spirit that who dwell it in us. If the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you, ask yourself if you are saved or not. I am not judging. That is what the Word of God says. What does it say in Second Peter chapter two, verse one and two? I pardon, I have a lot of verses to read. Babasayin ko po lahat nito. Second Peter chapter two, verse one and two. It says here, but there were first prophets. Also among the people, even as there shall be first teachers among you, who privily shall bring in the uh, uh, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. Verse 2, and many shall follow. Ito yung nakapagtataka. This is why I wonder why. And many shall follow their uh, pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. They will follow these people. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. I will read this fast. Sinsya na po, hindi lang sinulit. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, traitors, steady, high minded, lovers of precious, more than lovers of God, selfish. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, for such turn away. They're saying they, they are, they're saying they are godly, but they are doing evil things. You go away from them. Simple as that. Verse 6. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. Verse 7. Ever learning, indeed a tutor, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is the sad thing there. They never learned the word of God. And one more thing, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Sad thing. They were not able to know what is the truth. Again, I am not making parinag, but this is the word of God. The Lord put this in my heart, and I do believe it will encourage us. Even the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned it, this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 and 16. Matthew 7, 6, 15 and 16. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their what? By their fruits, by their work. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? And you will know them. It is easy to know them. Because if you are saying you believe God, you should be doing godly things. And if you are saying you know God, 
and you are doing evil things, it is the opposite way. It will not meet up. In verse 20, look at this. Verse 20 of Job, But ye, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see that? You say, see, I'll repeat again, But ye, beloved, kayo, mga mamana ng palata, you who believe the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe building up yourselves on what? On your most holy holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost later I'm going to expound that building up your most holy faith means in Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 let us be more a bit specific Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 rooted and built up in him who is that him? the Lord Jesus Christ and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving in this we establish our faith in the word of God and we establish our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Means faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying in the Holy Ghost. It was mentioned in verse 20. Look, but if you are going to look at it, you will see the contrast in verse 19. Praying, it says in verse 20, it says praying in the Holy Ghost, but in 19 says, this be they who separate themselves sensual what? Having not the spirit of God. But here it was mentioned, but you, you are praying in the Holy Ghost. You know what that is, it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 26? In Romans 8 26 it says, Likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought but the Spirit itself, Him alone, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. It is even the Holy Spirit the one guided us when we pray. That's why when we pray, we have to think first. I'm not saying to think by your own mind. I heard this from a preacher said, before you pray, you think. What's, what do you have to think? Who God is? How powerful is He is? We should know who God is that we are calling when we pray. And when we pray, we should be led by the Spirit of God. As a child of God, we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. When we pray, when we do, things, we do, we do these things, we do not rely on ourselves. We rely on the power of God that rested in us. That is the only thing that we can do for us to be able to pray the right prayer. In Jude 1 21 says, look at this, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Look at this, keep yourselves in the love of God, not in our own strength, but in the love of God. Okay, later we're going to uh, expound this more. Let us go first to 2 Corinthians 5 14. It says here, for the love of Christ constrained us, constrained us, because we thus judge that if, if one died for all, then we're all dead. It says here that it is the love of God that pushes us. It is the love of God that constrained us. Okay, looking powers that. Uh, okay, this is the meaning of constrained in Greek. It says to compress forcibly the energies into one channel. When we do this thing, when we love that, it is only the love of Christ that pushes us into one way, and that is only the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. He first loved us, and then we love them. Looking for the mercy. Looking for the mercy. What does it mean, looking for the mercy? In verse 21, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Looking for the mercy. I forgot to tell you the, 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 the title of this preaching. The title of this preaching is, I'm sorry, uh, keeping our love to God under his mercy. Keeping our love to God under his mercy. Sorry. <laughs> Fully. Okay, looking for the mercy means we should see our lives live under his mercy 
That's, what, that's how we should see our life. We should see our lives live under His mercy. How important the mercy of God in our life. Have you noticed that? How, how important this mercy that was given to us by God. In Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassion fell not, verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Do you, know why, do you know why we are not consumed? Because of the mercy of God. People think they are living because they are strong. People think because they are rich. People think they, they have a lot of connection. But you know what? The reason why we live, it is because of the mercy of God. But not without the mercy of God, we are consumed. Life is just like a vapor. People think that they are strong right now and, and they think that they can live for 20 more years, 30 more years. No, just one vein in your head that will be cut and the Lord will allow it, we will die. That's who we are. We are just like a vapor. We are nothing. You know what? To be honest with you, I'm a bit sad because one of my cousins in the Philippines died two days ago, and she is only 35 years old. She died with a four-month son. That for me, that, is, that hurts me, that saddens me. But we, know, we don't know the will of God. But I want you to see this. It says, I will repeat it again. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. I hope we see this. The reason why we live now, the reason why we are still here now, it is because of the mercy of God. Without the mercy of God, we will all perish. We will all be consumed to where? In hell. Do you know that we are entitled? Do you know that we are worthy of at least one thing in this world? What's that? Yes, I'm not joking. God knows that we are entitled. God knows that we are uh, worthy. Of at least one thing. We are entitled and worthy to go to hell because of sin. That's who we are. But the mercy and the grace of God consume us not. And that is the mercy of God in our life. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says here, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. What the Lord says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, those who believe in the Lord, are not consumed. But those people who will kept on mocking God, they will go to hell. They will be consumed in, a, in the lake of fire. I hope we, get, we are getting this message. We are not consumed because of God's because God is merciful. And you know what? A lot of things, a lot of people, I kept on repeating these things because people think they are rich or oh, I have a lot of money. I can pay the most expensive hospital. I can pay the most expensive uh, PP, uh, doctor who uh, their bill. No. All of these things are just because of God's mercy. Not only to us, even to the unbelievers, you will see the mercy of God. Even in this whole wide world, in this whole wide universe, it is covered by the mercy and the grace of God. And this is what Jude is saying to these people. In Psalm 78 verse 38, it says, But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time, turn he his, turn his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. And that is the compassion of God to us. He did not kill. Even as he did not kill us because of his compassion. And what does the word of God says? His compassion fail not. Before I go to verse 22, if you want to see how mercy is Summarize, you go to Psalms 136, the whole chapter. The whole chapter of Psalms 136 
every verse you will see uh, his mercy endureth forever you know what that means what's the meaning of mercy there his loving kindness his loving kindness can you go to the same God just, we'll just read two or three verses in Psalms 136 verse 1 oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever verse 2 oh give thanks unto God of gods for his mercy endureth forever verse 3 oh give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth forever you will continue this you will see that God's mercy endureth forever that God's mercy and his loving kindness is always there that's why we cannot boast before God it is because of his loving kindness to us because of that love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have what everlasting life and that is the mercy of God we cannot boast anything anything actually the word of God says not even our very own selves because we do not own ourselves it has been bought by the blood of Christ we are just caretaker we are just uh, told them, stewards of this life we are just stewards let us go down in verse 22 Jude 122 and some have compassion making a difference means to the needy those who are being uh, what do you call this being uh, those people in the church being uh, what do you call this being taught by this wrong that is you have compassion with them and it, look at this making a difference making a difference means difference means distinction in verse 19 this they be who separate themselves having not the spirit we should be there should be difference between those who are led by the spirit of god and to those people not having the spirit of god and there is distinction there there is difference there please allow me to uh, uh, share this just allow me a uh, minute, minute or two this illustration most of us we know what is the, uh, the the cars we know cars we see cars we see trucks they are being run by fuel some electricity but mostly by uh, gasoline fuel and diesel fuel and that is all we know but what we don't know is how the those fuel get burned Gasoline, gasoline, if the, the car is, uh, is gasoline, run by gasoline fuel, the fuel will be burned by the spark plug, the electricity, the electricity will go there, will run through the spark plug, it will spark between 15 to 20,000 boats that will run through those uh, spark plug, and it will burn the gasoline, and when the gasoline is burned, they will create power, that's why that, that the car can run. But you know what, how the diesel fuel get burned? It is not burned by any electricity inside the engine or the combustion chamber. Right there, I will show you why I'm saying this. The diesel fuel is burned inside the combustion chamber. You know what it burns? Air. It's been burned by air. They call that the compressed air. When you compress the air, it will become hot. Hot. It will be very, very hot. And when the diesel engine, the diesel fuel will be sprayed, it will burn. That's why they said, like there is a saying when it comes to the diesel uh, cars, as, as long as the diesel engine gets hotter and hotter, it will become stronger, stronger and faster. Because it burns the fuel through heat, not electricity. What I'm saying is, I just want you to see that in verse 19, this be who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit that is our difference from these people we have the spirit of god in us the reason why these people are teaching the wrong doctrine the wrong teaching because they are not having what the spirit of god the, the holy spirit is the great teacher the comforter and the great helper that we have in our life he's the only one can teach us but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can you how can you learn from the Word of God? It says in verse four of Jude, for there are certain men crept in a verse who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Do you think if you have the Holy Spirit, you will turn the grace of God 
into lasciviousness? Or do you think you will not get convicted by the Holy Spirit and denying the only Lord God? And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. But in verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That is the difference there. We build our faith on the Word of God. We build our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. We build our faith in relying on the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit. If you are not relying on the Holy Spirit, you cannot do anything. Uh, let me just use the word by, used by Preacher John in the Everything Bible. Ah, nasabi, ah. Everything Bible said, who, you do it, who do you think you are? Without the Holy Spirit of God, we can never do all these things. Without Him, we can never do this. That's why maybe Preacher John said, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who do you think I am? Without God, we are nothing. We are nothing. In verse 23 of Jude says, And that was saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments parted by the flesh. What's that mean? Even though they are totally polluted by the apostate teaching, these people are to be given the true gospel. Still, they need to, have, to hear the true gospel. But with great fear. Why? Lest the deliverer be contaminated also of what their of their wrong teaching. With their wrong teaching. You should be aware of that. You should be aware. It's just that even their garments spotted uh, their garments spotted by flesh. You know that in the book of uh, Leviticus in chapter thirteen and chapter fifteen, it was mentioned there but if a person had the leper if, if a leper's man or he has the leper Everything that were, were by that person is unclean. And everywhere that he lieth or seated, it will be unclean. It should be treated according to what Moses given them, given by the Lord. And even us, do you know that we are unclean? We are washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are filthy rags before God. We are nothing. We are filthy rags before God without the cleansing of His blood. Now, I have two more verses. In verse 24, look at this. In verse 24, Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. It makes us, it encourages us, right? It encourages us. Wait. Where's that? Okay. Okay, look. In verse 23, it says here, or verse 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before God in his presence, his glory with exceeding joy. That is a thing that is possible because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. But I want you to focus on this word. It says able. Now unto him that is able, willing to him that is desiring us not to fall. But you know what? We have to make a decision in our life. Because it says here, now to him that is able. God is always able in our life. He's always available always available but we need to make a decision in our life let me read verse 20 but ye beloved this is what i'm telling you about but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost we want to make a decision we have to build ourselves in the love of god building our faith on the word of god building our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. But God is more than able to do that in our life. But you know what? If you are not able, how can this be? We will always stumble, even though we are believers. But God says, I am able. I'm here. I'm here. That is what the Lord is saying. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 
says here, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. See? It says here, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abund abundantly above all that we can ask, but that is according to the will, to the power of God that is in us. According to the leading, according to the power of God in our life, not with our own selves. You know, this, this life that we have, the truth is that without God, we will all fall to the side of sin instead of falling to the side of righteousness. That's who we are. Imagine this. Pastor Joel mentioned this once before. In the millennial re reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, that will be 1,000 years, right? Who's the one reigning there? Who's the king? It is Jesus. Why there are people still did not believe him? Imagine that. Those people, even in the time, even in the time that the Lord Jesus Christ is reigning, they still deny Christ because they don't have the power of God in them. Imagine that. That's how deceitful the heart of man is. But for those people who have the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a power. There is the power of the Holy Spirit to help us. To help us to pray. To help us to, to rely on God. All of us, we commit mistakes. It's okay. But we don't do sin. Intentionally. If you're going to analyze it, sometimes, yes, we commit mistakes. And we commit sin. But sometimes if you're going to analyze it, Lord, I'm sorry because I am weak. But if you are doing it intentionally, then there's a problem. I remember when I was uh, still a little kid and studying in the elementary, I willfully coop it from the tindahan of my mother. <laughs> What's that? Uh, <laughs> I get money from, <laughs> because we have a small store before, and before I go to, the, to, go to school, I will get money not telling my mom. And I do that willfully. And let me just and let me just close in this. You know when Peter when Peter did not stab, cut the hair of Malchus, right? When he did that out of his cut what do you call this? Actually, uh, it is a fast thing that he did when but the Lord rebuked him. Peter, don't do that. While putting the ear of uh, Malchus, one of the one that want to arrest the Lord Jesus. But look, look at this. But in the time of Sapphira, Ananias and Sapphira, the sin that they did is, it is a premeditated sin. They did not allow the power of God to dwell in them. Although they are said, I'm trying to say is that they premeditated this sin. But what I'm trying to say is that if we will not allow, even though we are believers, we will not allow the power of God to work in our lives then it will be our sorry. But the word of God says God is able, more than able, more than willing to keep us not from falling. And lastly, verse 25 of Jude, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. You know what? As a believer, we give all, we give all the glory to God because we know that God is worthy of all these things. And I hope we have seen, in the long it's not only that we have seen the warnings against these four teachers, but Jude is telling us, for us as a believer, we should keep our life in loving God, building our faith on the Word of God, on the Lord Jesus Christ, allowing the Holy, Sp the Holy Spirit to work in us. Before I close, let me just say this one last time. Keep your love, keep our love to God under His mercy. Let us all stand by and let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We, Lord, we are so grateful.